Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So my name is Joyce Ryan. Um, I work at Montachusett Home Care. I've been there seven years. I am a licensed social worker, and I coordinate a program at Montachusett for caregivers uh, who actually are caring for elders or disabled adults. So Montachusett Home Care is uh, a nonprofit. It is a uh, we are funded primarily through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, and we're considered an elder service agency. Montachusett Home Care serves 21 communities in this area, North Central Mass, and Clinton is in that territory also. Uh, we are one of 27 across the state that are elder service agencies and also considered aging services access points, or ASAPs. And I don't know who made up that name, but that is very long and very confusing. So what really do the ASAPs offer to people? ASAPs can do a variety of things. All ASAPs have huge uh, information and referral departments. We have databases that are statewide of all the resources for elders in Massachusetts. Uh, so really they're experts on resources for elders. And it's probably one of the first places you should call if you have questions. And some, somebody here, Mike, told us here that he had gone into Montachusett Home Care to get information for, for one of his aunts who was um, needing some help. So those are the kinds of things that ASAPs can offer. Uh, ASAPs, really, their biggest programs are the, um, the uh, state home care programs. And all the ASAPs administer the state home care programs. So what happens when someone makes a referral? Mike went in, he talked to the agency maybe about his aunt, and they sent somebody out. They called them an assessor to go into the home for free. They go in, they look at the elder, they ask the elder questions, what that person might need for services, what they can do for themselves. Can they do their activities of daily living, which might be um, dressing, bathing, um, getting out, just getting out of bed for some people is really, really difficult. Uh, can they feed themselves? Are they able to get around to, to cook? Are they able to manage on their own? So those are the kinds of questions that you uh, need to answer and find out what kinds of services people need. The next thing they do is they look at a person's income and they see if they are eligible for incomes. The state has many, many programs for all different income levels for people that are 60 and over. And so these services then are all looked at, the assessor decides what would be best for the person, and then if they do need services and they really want some help, then they assign a case manager and a nurse to each individual so that somebody is overseeing their care, somebody is overseeing what kinds of services they get. Now, all the ASAPs offer non-medical services, and the services it might include um, help with bathing. A homemaker might come in and help the person get out of bed and, and get dressed in the morning or take their shower. Or they might have somebody coming in to do some personal care. Um, they might have somebody that would help them cook uh, a meal for themselves so that they can eat during the day. Many people have uh, Meals on Wheels, and everyone heard of, has heard about Meals on Wheels. So they have uh, make sure that they are set up for Meals on Wheels. We have people that come in and just help with laundry a couple of times a week. Uh, we have people that might go grocery shopping. Some people can't go grocery shopping. Or some people can't carry the bags anymore. They're too heavy. They can't go and get their own groceries anymore. So all of those are the kinds of services that help people stay in their homes. All ASAP's mission all of them, is to help people stay in their homes as safely as possible and as long as possible Joyce, and can, support can their me, caregivers. Sorry, can you give people an idea of, like, if often this question gets asked, about how many hours, for example, they might be, you know, they might be able to get at home? If it, it depends if, if on the qualify. program that they qualify for. Yeah. So it depends really on need. Uh, the needier you are, which is the, the 
the more help you need in your home to stay at home, then you would have more hours. Um, it goes anywhere. Some of the basic home care programs are a couple of hours a week all the way up to 8, 10, 12 hours a week. So it really depends. Uh, some of the programs are even more. Uh, many, many of the uh, home care programs that um, we offer are, some of them are housing programs so that you could be in um, a housing situation and maybe you're in elderly housing and there's a whole group of people there and they call it group adult foster care. So they pool their hours so everybody in that building is eligible to receive two hours of care. So they pool those hours and there's five people that are in that congregate unit then. So then they have ten hours a week of services. So that, I mean, we're very creative on how we can get people more hours because people need a lot of help. There is there's really no such thing as um, state 24-hour care. They don't do that anymore. We used to be able to have more hours. We have uh, programs that help people come out of nursing homes, and those programs actually give you a lot more hours. But you still can't get 24-hour care. It's really, really difficult. So you'll have to pay privately or have family supplement the care that you can get from the state home care programs. But I think one of the really important things is that there are hours available. Once again, if you're just slowing down, if you've yep. just got some issues, yep. these programs are ideal it's for you. It's a really great way to start. Yeah when you start having a little problems and you might have some some memory issues and you just need somebody to come in and kind of cue you to remind you gee have you taken your shower today or do you have you put on fresh clothes today oh I, those look like the clothes you were wearing yesterday mr mr brown why don't we change some of those clothes and those are really good ways to get people to start um, services when they really need them and they're not really willing to have a lot of people in the home to help them. And, um, and I think well, just one other thing I wanted to mention, yep. w there was this assumption that these programs are only available if you're broke. That's right. right. It's not true. These, no. are, these are typically not asset-based qualification yep. programs. It's, there are all some income, in, it's right. all income-based. Income. So you can own your own home, you can have a, a nice car, you can have all kinds of things. Um, it's based on your income. If you own rental property, that's okay. You can own the rental property. Whatever you take home in rent each month, that is considered income. So that on top of your Social Security or whatever pension you're getting would be considered income. We have programs for people that pay 100% of their income even. Um, they, they're based at 100%, which means they're over income and would have to pay for services. Services are still cheaper. They're contracted services, the rates we get from the agencies and um, that do the home care. We actually contract out for services. Um, the state tells us anyone who receives um, and administers the state home care programs cannot offer the services themselves. There's a conflict of interest there. So we'd be paying ourselves to do the work. They don't allow that. So we pay the private agencies, um, which there are many. We contract with probably 18 agencies to go into the home and do different things for different people. And so there's a variety of services. The person who makes the assessment and goes into the home they can tell you what programs that you'd be eligible for, and they can tell you what's the best thing for you, what's going to help you the most, and what's going to cost you the least, the least amount. So those are some of the programs we have. Um, we have uh, other housing programs. We have special programs that um, we have congregate sites for people who can't live alone anymore. We have some sites for people that are younger that maybe have brain injury, maybe have been in a car accident. They can't live alone any longer. So all the congregate sites have private uh, bathrooms, private bedrooms, and then they share living space. So they have a shared dining area, shared kitchen, sh and shared living room. But they also have services, and they have eight to ten hours a, a week of uh, a day. Of, they could have eight to ten hours a day of services. Um, we have uh, adult family care, which is sort of like adult foster care. And we have homes. We have 80 homes that have people living in them that are older now. And these people would 
don't have family around, they don't have anywhere else to go, and don't want to be in a nursing home and don't need nursing home care, but they do need 24-hour supervision. So they, they choose to live in a home. This home becomes their home for the rest of their life. They stay there. And those homes are very successful. Um, you must be on Mass Health to take part in that program. Um, and there's other Mass Health programs like the PCA program, personal care attendant, so that you hire your own person to take care of you, and that's paid through Mass Health. So there's all different programs. There's so many programs that are available for people. Um, let's see, I want to tell you a little bit about the volunteer programs because all the ASAPs have volunteer programs. We have money management program that will help people go into the home and help you pay your bills. So people that maybe are going blind, people that um, have arthritis very badly in their hands, can't write checks anymore, these people need help just to stay in their home. They don't need a lot of things, but they have somebody who goes in and helps them manage their money. We also have volunteers who take people to doctor's appointments, and that's important because a lot of people, if you don't have anybody, you don't drive anymore, and you have no one who can take you to a doctor's appointment, you can't get to your, even see your own doctor anymore. So we have volunteers who actually will escort you into the doctor's office and help you get to see your, your physician. Uh, we have a volunteer program, the Nursing Home Ombudsman Program. And we administer, Massachusetts Home Care administers the Nursing Home Ombudsman Program here in North County and actually also in the Worcester County, in the Worcester area, greater Worcester area. So all the nursing homes have an ombudsman or an advocate who goes in er at least once a week to all the nursing homes. They, they advocate for family members of residents and for the residents themselves. Um, if there's any issues, those are really important because we all know nursing homes are great if you really, really need them and there's nowhere else to go, but there's lots of problems. And so people need an advocate in the nursing homes. It's really important. Uh, one of the other things we do, the, um, the programs really for caregivers, everybody needs help at some point. And it's really falls on caregivers or family members or neighbors or relatives, um, anyone, friends that really help other people have a lot of responsibility. And sometimes the stress gets too much for, for caregivers. And so it's really important that caregivers learn how to deal with the stress and talk to other caregivers. So support groups are around for caregivers. We have um, something that's really important, a caregiver scholarship that really helps uh, people stay in their homes longer. It can help with respite care. So if, you're care, if you have a son or daughter that um, is, is taking care of their parents and you know that they really need some help, that they need to get away for a little while, it's really important for them. They, could get, they can apply for the caregiver scholarship and get some respite care, get help to come in the home so they can get out and do something um, and get away from the situation. Um, you might be caring for somebody. You might see a neighbor who needs some help. So, you know, it's really a good way to help. It's free. The, ca the caregiver scholarship is, um, could be up to four or $500, depending each year on what's available for money. But those are the kinds of things that are really important to help people stay in their homes longer. Thank you very, yeah. very much, Joyce. So you can see Montachusetts just provides an incredible wealth of possible programs and talking to Montachusetts is free so it really kind of it's not only free you end up talking to them you might end up getting something that you didn't know that you were <laughs> entitled to so they're really important and I think having somebody that's a clearinghouse for home care services also is really important right because I know a lot of people who are very concerned about that right because they're concerned about you know who you want to invite into your home are you at the point where you want to have somebody and many people postpone doing that in many cases for too long just because they're so concerned about it. So you want to know that there's some kind of a filter. So we've asked Shelby Marshall from Right at Home, which is a home care agency that is in this area, to talk to you about what home care agencies do or what they provide. You want to think about that. I think especially if you're in that situation, once again, you're slowing down. You may need a little bit of help. You're thinking, well, maybe I just want to, you know, there's a lady down the street that I could hire, you know, or somebody knows somebody. So you may, and you may want to do that, 
or you may want to consider talking to an agency. Once again, the goal of the exercise is to shop before you have an emergency, to have a real understanding of kind of what's out there. Shelby. Uh, 